I am super passionate about barrier health. If you couldn't tell already, I mean, I have so many videos on tips and tricks and products, things to help heal your damaged moisture barrier or help a weak barrier, just help keep that barrier strong and healthy. And yet I know so many of you guys are out there wondering, how can I tell if there's something wrong with my moisture barrier? What are the signs of a weak barrier or a damaged barrier? How can I know what's going on? And that's what this video is going to be all about today. Today is gonna to be all about those warnings and symptoms, those little signals that our skin gives us that something is not quite right with our skin barrier health and that it's time to give it a little bit of extra TLC. Not only am I gonna give you the signs and symptoms, but I'm also going to give you some quick tips and hints on how to get your skin back on track quickly. So give the video a big thumbs up and let's get started. So the very first sign and usually one of the earliest signs that your moisture barrier needs a little bit of help is dehydration. Yeah, it's a very common symptom for many of us to go through um, on our skincare journey, but dehydration definitely is that first warning sign that your moisture barrier isn't working the way it's supposed to. Now, you wanna think about your moisture barrier kind of like a brick wall. And it's like a brick wall that is held tightly together with all of those bricks and mortar. And the way that it's supposed to function is to hold all the good stuff into your skin, your hydration and moisture, and keep all the bad stuff out out, like pollution and irritants and bacteria. But when your moisture barrier becomes weak or even damaged, think about some of those bricks uh, missing and now all of a sudden we've got like holes in our wall. The wall is still there, but we've got, now we've got uh, some entryways, right? So that means that your hydration can be leaving and escaping through those holes while the irritants can actually come in through those holes as well. It's a very simple way to think about it, but it makes a lot of sense because this is how your barrier works. So dehydration is the escape of hydration through those holes out, um, out of your skin, leaving your skin feeling tight. Uh, from the inside, feeling tight and dry from the inside. So a quick way to see if you are experiencing dehydration is to take note of your skin in the middle of the day. Your skincare routine, when you put it on in the morning, should keep your skin hydrated and protected until you do your nighttime routine. Your skin should still feel hydrated throughout the day. And yet, if you start to feel any dryness or tightness, almost that feeling of, I can't wait to wash my skin and put on more skincare so that it can feel uh, relieved of this tight feeling. If you're feeling like craving more skincare products on your skin by two, three o'clock in the afternoon or even earlier, this is a really good sign that your skin is losing hydration throughout the day. And that's not good. That means that that barrier is not working the way it is supposed to. One of the second symptoms of a barrier that is in need of a little bit of help is dull and lifeless skin. Maybe you're seeing more clogged pores on your skin or you're seeing a lot more blackheads. All of a sudden your skin just isn't looking so good. And this is actually a warning sign. We need to uh, take note of this and understand that this could be related to our moisture barrier health. Clogged pores and dehydration go hand in hand and that all leads back to your moisture barrier. Now when your skin is loose Losing water throughout the day. It's not holding hydration in the way that it is supposed to. If you go through that long enough, it actually signals to your body that something is not right. It signals to your body that your skin is parched and dehydrated. Unfortunately, our body doesn't know how to produce more water to supply our skin with hydration and plumpness. All it knows how to do to moisturize or hydrate the skin is to produce oil. So that generally means that your skin is overproducing oil. So you can feel dry and tight underneath with a bucket of oil on top. It's very, very common. But when you have way too much oil being produced on your face, plus we've got dehydrated skin, we've got skin cells that aren't shedding at the proper rate because we don't have that right 
balance on our skin. That is when those dead skin cells start to get trapped inside of the pores. They mix with that thick sebum that's being overproduced by the skin and they get trapped in that pore. And that's where the clog forms. And that's why you might start to see more texture on your skin, more clogged pores, more bumps. And those can definitely become inflamed or infected and those can turn into acne or pimples. Now, this can also, you know, traditional bacterial acne can also flourish when your moisture barrier is weak too. Because remember, if, if your moisture barrier is like a brick wall with missing bricks, right? We've got holes in it. That means that the outside irritants can come into your skin deeper and they can take up residence and have a party. And that includes the acne bacteria. So these are all signs that you may want to kind of like check in with your moisture barrier because acne, clogged pores, dull skin, blackheads, those aren't just symptoms of, you know, ingredients messing around with your skin from your skincare products. It sometimes can be a sign that your skin underneath that moisture barrier is not healthy. So the third symptom is definitely a sign that something a little bit more serious is going on with that moisture barrier. And we're starting to get into that damaged moisture barrier area. And one of the classic signs of a damaged moisture barrier is skin that is all of a sudden very sensitive is easily irritated and definitely a classic sign of that is when products you've used for a long time start to burn or sting your skin like unexplainably. And this is definitely a classic sign because if your moisture barrier is basically it has holes in it, right? That means that your skincare products, which were really only ever meant to penetrate so far into your skin as it is, they can actually start to penetrate through those holes deeper. And when those, those ingredients and those skincare ingredients get into your skin deeper, that means that they can cause a lot more problems than they ever did in the past. That's when things start to become a lot more irritating. Things that never bothered you all of a sudden do because things are penetrating deeper than they should. So definitely take note as your skin all of a sudden kind of pissy, right? It's kind of pissed off. All of a sudden, it just seems like any little thing you do to it, any little thing you put on it seems to bother it, make it burn, make it sting, make it feel red, make it feel raw and sensitive. These are definitely huge warning signs that you need to take note of. And the fourth sign is definitely a serious sign. And if you're seeing this on your skin, it feels very serious to you as well. And that is when it looks like you've aged five to 10 years almost overnight, all of a sudden your skin looks thin, saggy, hollow. It looks dry, crepey. You may even start to notice fine lines and wrinkles looking very deep on your skin. These are definitely signs of severe dehydration on the skin. You have no hydration on your skin. This is an emergency. When you don't have hydration in your skin and you've let it go on for so long, nothing is plumping your skin. Nothing is smoothing your skin. Nothing is holding your skin up basically, right? That's why your skin appears so thin. That's why you're seeing that aging process occurring on your skin. Yes, if it is due to dehydration, you can reverse it with hydration and fixing your moisture barrier, but this is a major sign that something in your skin is not working the way it's supposed to. So those are definitely some of the easiest warning signs to take note of, of what's going on with your moisture barrier. And they definitely help clue you into the severity of your moisture barrier issues. Now, if you you uh, went through those symptoms and you do feel that you have a damaged moisture barrier, I do have some resources for how to heal a damaged moisture barrier. And I'm going to link all of that in the info box below. After this video, I, I really encourage you guys to check that one out because it's a little bit more in depth for a more severe case. But right now I want to share with you guys some six quick and easy ways to kind of adjust your skincare products as well as your skincare habits to get your back on the right track to a healthy moisture barrier. Okay, so tip number one is hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. You knew that this was coming, right? You gotta rehydrate that dehydrated skin. And one of my favorite ways to do this, and what I, I truly believe to be one of the most economical ways to do this is with a toner. Toners are great, especially the really watery, easily absorbed toners because they can pack a lot of hydration punch without a lot of weight or greasiness on the skin. Now, the reason why I say it's economical is because toners can be layered up onto the the skin without creating 
thickness or heaviness on your skin. Meaning if you're having a really dehydrated day, you can put on seven layers of toner without adding weight to your skincare routine. Or if the next day you're feeling pretty balanced, you can only put on three. It's one product that can be customized as many ways as your skin needs right there in the moment. My favorite products, one is the Keep Cool and Soothe Bamboo Toner, and I also recommend Etude House Soonjung pH Relief 5.5 Toner. Either one is gonna give you that nice, light, watery hydration that's really easy to layer up. I think that it would be a little irresponsible of me to just say hydrate, 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 because that's only one piece of the puzzle. So along with your hydrate, 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 I would also recommend that you seal it in. Skin is all about your oil and water balance. It is a yin and yang. You need both in order to achieve balance on your skin. So layer on that watery, hydrating toner, but then I really do recommend starting to seal it in with some moisturizing layers. And one of my favorite ways to do this is by using a a thicker essence or toner to start to kind of hug hydration into the skin. I really recommend the Pyongyang Yul Essence Toner to be used after your watery toner or the Laneige Cream Skin Refiner. Both of these products bring a little bit of moisture and a little bit of hugging to the table that really helps to keep your hydration in place as you heal your moisture barrier. So tip number two is to feed your moisture barrier those ingredients that it is craving. And what are those ingredients? There are three ingredients that you 100% have to have in your routine for a strong moisture barrier, and that is ceramides, cholesterol, and fatty acids. Ceramides tend to get the spotlight when it comes to uh, great ingredients for your moisture barrier, and there's no denying ceramides will definitely help to strengthen your moisture barrier. However, it is also proven that ceramides work better and more efficiently, AKA faster, when combined with uh, cholesterol and fatty acids. So you definitely have to have all three in order to get the most bang for your skincare buck, so to speak. Some of my favorite products that include all three of these ingredients, one is a moisturizer, and that is the Iliun Ceramide Ado Concentrate Cream. Love this moisturizer. It's a great medium weight and nourishing moisturizer. It's very protective. The next product that I want to do a quick shout out to is Stradia Liquid Gold. This is a fabulous barrier treatment. This does contain a good amount of ceramides, cholesterol, and fatty acids, along with a bunch of other barrier loving ingredients. This product was particularly formulated to heal moisture barriers. It's all about moisture barrier health. So this is an excellent one to go for, as well as Crave Great Barrier Relief. This also contains the ceramides, cholesterol, and fatty acids. So my next tip is to take a hard look at your cleansing habits. Oh yeah, cleansing is a very like boring and mundane area in the skincare world, but it is really important for us to take a hard look at this because cleansing is actually one of the easiest ways to strip a lot of moisture from your skin. The very the very first thing I want to talk about is how many times a day you use a cleanser. And I actually only recommend using a cleanser once a day. Once? Yeah, once a day at nighttime. You may be like, well, what do I do in the morning? Well, I actually recommend washing your face with water. That's it, just water in the morning and you can do your full cleansing or double cleansing, use your cleansing products at nighttime. All I ask is that you try it. If you're suffering with moisture barrier is issues and you're still using a cleanser twice a day, just try it. If you don't like it, then don't do it, but definitely give it a try and see if it benefits you in any way. Now, if you ever feel like you wash your face with water and it's just not quite enough, like you still have a little bit of oil on your skin, I actually recommend using a washcloth. You know, don't scrub too hard, just gentle, but that tends to help break up the oil film that some of us can get that tends to break that down a lot faster with just water and a washcloth. Speaking of your cleanser, I recommend only using low pH cleansers. What does that mean? So a low pH cleanser is a cleanser that reads at 5.5 on the pH scale. And when you raise your skin's a pH level higher, all kinds of crazy stuff can happen to your skin, including moisture loss, um, an increase in inflammation and redness on the skin, but also you can start to see an increase of 
acne. We definitely want to give our skin the best chance to just heal itself. So maintaining its own like sort of like ecosystem is very important. So you wanna honor your skin's pH level by only using cleansers that mimic that 5.5 pH. And just a quick note about your water temperature. When you wash your face or even when you get into the shower, you wanna make sure that that water temperature is not too hot. And if it's steaming, it's too hot. <laughs> hot water can actually strip moisture from your skin and it can make your skin uh, more prone to even more dehydration, right? So we wanna be careful. Uh, you don't need to use ice cold water by any means, but just uh, lukewarm uh, water will do. Just make sure that it's not steaming hot because that's gonna, that's gonna make your skin a little bit unhappy. So my next tip is to avoid any irritating or stripping ingredients in your skincare products. We have to remember that just because something used to work for us when our skin was healthy, that doesn't necessarily mean it's the right choice for us now that our skin is in a weakened or damaged state. So I highly encourage you if you are using products with um, some of the ingredients I'm going to talk about if you're using them now it might be time to just set them aside for a little bit just to give yourself the best chance to get your skin back on track and one of the number one culprits for stripping moisture off of the skin and aggravating dehydration is alcohol yeah alcohol and skincare can cause all kinds of issues for especially for weak and damaged moisture barriers another one that I actually really recommend avoiding actually at all times, but particularly when your skin is in this vulnerable state is essential oils. Essential oils can contain irritating compounds in them. And remember, skincare is now absorbing a little bit deeper than it should into your skin. And that means that those potentially irritating compounds have a much higher chance of causing havoc on your skin. The same actually goes for artificial fragrance and skincare products as well. It's best to just take a really gentle and minimal approach to your skincare products as you get your skin back on track and these three ingredients alcohol essential oils and fragrance are really best to avoid at this time my next tip is sunscreen oh yeah you're not gonna get away by watching anybody's skincare channel without a recommendation for sunscreen right I know you guys hear it all the time but let me just tell you quickly why I have put sunscreen on this list number one if you're not already wearing sunscreen yet please know that UV um, damage UV rays can actually damage your moisture barrier they can weaken and damage its um, function over time so please know that whenever you go out without sunscreen you are risking uh, the health of your moisture barrier second if you're already wearing sunscreen but maybe you're not super diligent about reapplication or putting on enough or putting it on 15 minutes at a minimum before you go outside and expose yourself to UV rays please amend your habits now, especially if you're dealing with a weak or damaged moisture barrier because the UV rays uh, that are penetrating your skin and if you've not worn sunscreen or you've not you know, put it on in the, the proper way, uh, the UV rays can actually penetrate into your skin even deeper, the UVA rays particularly. Those are the rays that cause a lot of damage. Premature aging, cancer on the skin because you got holes in that moisture barrier, it can actually get deeper and cause worse damage over time. Plus, if you're not being diligent about your reapplication with sunscreen and you're trying to heal your damaged moisture barrier, remember, this is something that can set your progress back. So sunscreen is very, very important on your moisture barrier journey. And finally, just a quick word about chemical exfoliation. Uh, I think chemical exfoliation gets the most uh, blame when it comes to moisture barrier issues. And it is for sure, one of the most common culprits of moisture barrier problems. Here's my piece of advice because we're definitely dealing with a spectrum of problems, right? We've got weak moisture barriers on one end, which is a very low level, um, very low level problem, right? And then we've got damaged moisture barriers over here, which is like high level SOS, I need help now. If this is you, SOS, I need help now, damaged moisture barrier, I do recommend actually stopping your chemical exfoliation use temporarily, just until you heal your skin and then you can add it back in and see how your skin uh, does. This is just gonna give you the best chance at healing up 
faster. If you have a weakened moisture barrier, just a little bit of light dehydration on the skin, then I would actually say, um, you know, you have a little bit more flexibility for keeping exfoliation in your routine, but I would encourage you to potentially um, step down your applications a little bit. Like if you're applying it four times a week, see if you can't go down to three or two, just to kind of give your skin a little bit of a rest, right? Just focusing a little bit more on hydrating the skin, nourishing the skin, and giving your barrier everything it needs. And then you can resume back to your normal routine uh, down the road when your skin feels stronger. I don't think you need to take it out completely, but you might want to keep an eye on it when we're dealing with a lack of hydration on the skin. That can be an area that can set us back a little bit. So I hope that video helped answer how do I know what's going on with my moisture barrier. And if you're craving more tips, tricks, and product recommendations for a healthy moisture barrier, please check out the info box. I've got all kinds of video resources for you guys down in the info box. And I'm curious to know, uh, let me know, what are your skin's signs and symptoms? What, what does your skin do or tell you when your moisture barrier is just a little bit out of whack? For me, an increase in clogged pores is a huge sign that it's time to go in with those ceramides, cholesterol, and fatty acids. If this video helped you, please consider subscribing to my channel. I release two new skincare, usually K-beauty focused videos every single week. And don't forget to turn on those notifications so you don't miss out when the new videos are released. I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. I hope you're having a fabulous day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.